This is Comet C2022 E3ZTF, zooming through space at more than 57 kilometers per second in relation to the Earth. That's more than 200,000 kilometers an hour, which is wickedly fast. And this animation is just an hour and a half that I captured from my backyard. You can also do the reverse where the comet stays still and the background stars move. The video is only two seconds long, but I think it's a really good two seconds. Before we move any further, what do all the letters and numbers in the name actually mean? I didn't know, so I looked it up. Uh, and if you know, feel free to jump to the next chapter. Uh, otherwise, let me tell you what I learned. The C is for non-periodic comet. We won't see this comet again near Earth in our lifetime, not for another 50,000 years. It can also be P for periodic, X if the orbit can't reliably be calculated, D if the comet has disappeared or broken up like Shoemaker-Levy 9 that crashed into Jupiter a couple of decades ago, A if it's actually misidentified as a comet, but it's actually a minor planet, or I if it's an interstellar object. Hello, Oumuamua. I don't know what the 2022 could be, so uh, if you know, let me know in the comments below. The E3 is based on a half-month calendar subdivision where each month is divided into two halves and assigned a letter, A through X. So E being the fifth letter of the alphabet, it's assigned to the first half of March. And the three indicates that it's the third comet discovered in that period. This comet was discovered on March 2nd, 2022. Wait, they discovered three comets by the second day of March. As Carlita would say, that's cool. And the ZTF is short for the Zwicky Transient Facility. Uh, it is based in California, and it is the organization that is responsible for discovering this comet on March 2nd. The organization itself is named after Swiss astronomer Fritz Zwicky, who I think has a really fun name to say, uh, and he's also worth looking up. This here is my stacked image of the comet. I'm really happy with how it came out. And this was taken with my trusty AT60ED refractor with my ZWO533MC Pro Astrocam on my AVX mount, and of course everything is controlled by Astroberry. And this image is a composite where I stacked the stars first and then stacked the comet and laid the comet on top of the background stars. I did this using Cyril and AstroPixel processor. This was my first time trying to stack a comet and I will say that it's a lot of work uh, and I did struggle a lot and it took me more time than, than I'm willing to admit to get something like this. I'll link the serial tutorial on their website in the description below if you're interested. You should be able to do both of them in serial. I had a little bit of trouble because I took four minute exposures. Uh, in retrospect, I should have done one to two minutes, but uh, the transparency in the seeing that evening was very uh, terrible. And I did four minutes to try and get more detail from the comet's tail. Um, I don't regret it, but if I get a chance again, I will do 60 to 120 seconds at max. And if anyone is interested in seeing how I processed this, processed this um, in AstroPixel Processor, Cyril, and I'll use Photoshop to actually do the actual composite, uh, let me know uh, if I get a chance to image the comment again, I will record my process uh, and share my struggles with you and maybe something I do will help you uh, with your comment pictures. I don't have a lot of experience imaging and processing comets. I have a really bad shot of Comet Neowise from a couple of years ago. Uh, I didn't put the same amount of effort into it due to clouds and just bad timing. But now that I have one comet under my belt, uh, I'm excited to catch more. So I'm hoping we discover a few more uh, over the next few years that I can just try and hunt down. It's been very cloudy here. Um, I'm sure it's been cloudy everywhere, uh, especially when you're trying to look at the comet. Uh, but I'm hoping for some clear skies over the next few days, especially around February 1st, because the comet will get closer and brighter until February 1st uh, before it starts to move away from us. And even if you miss the February 1st uh, deadline, it's not really a deadline, you can still see the comet for a few more weeks. Uh, the It'll be smaller and it'll look dimmer because it's moving farther away from us and it moves very fast. But you'll still be able to see it for a couple more weeks, um, especially if you're trying to image it. It'll be easier to image it than to try and catch it visually. Uh, and one more thing I'll mention about it. If you're trying to watch it visually, uh, you've probably seen headlines everywhere saying, hey, there's a green comet everywhere. Uh, it won't look green to you if you're just looking at it through a telescope or binoculars. Uh, our eyes won't be able to pick up the green. The only reason it looks green is because we take long exposures of the, the comet's halo and the tail and it just looks green uh, because of how much light we collect and how the light reflects off or refracts or reflects off the uh, the tail and the and the comet itself if you see the comet and you don't see green that's normal 
And if you've had a chance to see the comet itself, or if you've imaged it, share your experience with me. I'd love to hear about it. I'm wishing everyone who wants to see the comet over the next few days clear skies.